on combat vessels and auxiliaries, gunfire control system Mark 57 is helping to get the guns on target. The Mark 57 system was designed primarily to control anti-aircraft guns. The system has two main stations, one below and one topside. The gun director Mark 57 can be mounted almost anywhere on the ship above decks, depending on the ship's design and fire control requirements. The number and duties of men stationed at the director varies depending on the operational procedure adopted by the particular ship. In the director, the control officer is responsible for the operation of the entire system. He supervises training and in combat makes all on-the-spot decisions. The director pointer tracks the target in bearing and elevation. One or more talkers to relay information and orders complete the director crew. The second station can be located almost anywhere below deck or within the superstructure. In this compartment are parts of the computing system, the radar console, the target acquisition unit, and wind box. The radar operator and the TACU operator make up the crew for this station. Today, fire control is a technical operation involving many factors and requiring perfect teamwork from a sizable crew using a lot of equipment. The director pointer can train and elevate the director through a wide field of vision. For optical sighting, he uses two sights. First, an open sight. Second, the telescope Mark 79 Mod Zero. Now to match our stationary ship, let's assume a stationary target, which the director pointer centers on the reticle of the telescope. The position of the telescope establishes the line of sight. From the line of sight, we get the target's elevation above the plane of the deck and its bearing from the ship's center line. The telescope elevation and bearing indications are automatically transmitted from the director to the computer Mark 16, located in the radar compartment. This computer calculates the gun elevation order and the gun train order. When the target is in motion, we have to predict where the target will move to during the time the projectile is in flight. To predict where the target will be at any given time, we must know its rate of motion. But we have no way of actually making this measurement. What we can do is measure the rate of motion of the director as it tracks the target. This is where the computer Mark 17 comes in. This computer is mounted on the director so that it moves with the telescope. Inside the computer case are three gyroscopes which share the job of measuring the rate of motion of the director as the target is tracked. In the computer Mark 17, range information from radar is used to vary the forces applied by the springs. Weights and torque motors also control the rotation of the gyro shaft. All we need now to get a measurement of target rate of motion is some sort of device to measure how far the gyro shaft rotates. In the Mark 17 computer, this is done by an electromagnetic pickoff coil. To compute lead angles correctly, the Mark 17 computer must have two things. From the director pointer, it must have smooth, steady, accurate, on-the-nose tracking in bearing and elevation. And as we have seen, it must have accurate range information from radar. Below decks, any one of a number of radar equipments can be used with the gunfire control system Mark 57. This is the radar equipment Mark 39. On the radar operator's scope of the radar equipment Mark 39, the main sweep is zero to 30,000 yards, with precision sweep covering any 2,000 yard interval. Any target within range and within the scanned area will show up as a pip on the scope. When the pip appears, the operator slews to the approximate range and with his range crank, puts the pip into the gate. Here's the action as it appears on the scope. By tracking, he keeps it in the gate. 
This automatically feeds range data to the computer Mark 17 for use in computing lead angles. At the computer Mark 16, other factors such as projectile drift and super elevation have been set in. These wind box and ballistic settings modify the forces applied by the springs, weights and torque motors in the computer Mark 17. This changes the lead angles so that a projectile launched along the gun line of fire will hit the target. Now to tie the whole fire control problem and its solution together. One, the line of sight through the director telescope determines director train and elevation. This information is fed to the computer Mark 16. Two, as the director tracks the target, the gyros in computer Mark 17 measure the tracking rates of the director in traverse and elevation. Three, the radar sends range and range rate data to the computer Mark 17 to modify the precession of the gyros. Four, the wind box sends additional corrections to the lead angles to the computer Mark 17. Five, the computer Mark 17 sends corrected elevation and traverse lead angles to the computer Mark 16 which converts them into gun orders. Six, the computer Mark 16 transmits the gun train orders to the train parallax corrector Mark 5, which sends out corrected gun train orders. Gun elevation orders and corrected gun train orders are sent to the guns. Power and amplification are supplied to keep the signals at sufficient strength to operate the system properly. With data being fed continuously, this system gives a continuous solution to the fire control problem. With good teamwork and smooth tracking, this continuous solution keeps the guns along the line of fire. So far, in looking at the Mark 57 system one part at a time, we have covered only the main principles in regard to optical tracking. Good visibility has been one of our basic assumptions. When visibility conditions make optical tracking undesirable or impossible, the Mark 57 system may be used for blind tracking. In blind operation, ranging procedures are fundamentally the same as for visual operation, getting the pip in the gate and keeping it there. But to gate the pip and to interpret his scope properly, the radar operator should know the capabilities and limitations of the system. This equipment has a range accuracy of 30 yards plus one half percent of range in either direction. The range gate is 165 yards wide. Two targets less than 165 yards apart could both appear in the range gate as one large pip. When separated by more than 165 yards, they will appear as two separate pips. Reflections from the shore will interfere with the detection of aircraft approaching low from the land side and may shield a plane behind the hills completely. A low-flying target will be difficult to track due to water reflections. In this film, we have started with the simplified fire control problem and built it up to the completed whole. We have seen how the director, the radar, the TACU, and the computers are used to solve the problem and to get the orders to the gun. We have seen the operation for visual tracking and for blind tracking, but we have concentrated more on mechanisms than on men. The second film of this series puts the men of the fire control team together. It covers the actual operation of the equipment and shows how in combat, the fire control team can use the Mark 57 system with teamwork and understanding to get the results it was designed to give.